Hello, and welcome to episode 66 of Knit Sense. My name is Jan. You can find me as Jan Allen RN on Ravelry and as Knit Sense on Instagram. And we also have a Facebook group called Knit Sense. So you can find me there. Uh, I don't know where, you know, I actually rewind the whole story but last night I saw my daughter made a, a roll of a video of a compilation of things and in there was my first episode of knit sense and the only reason I'm saying I'm mentioning it is because like we are all the way back to the beginning in this episode <laughs> um I didn't charge my camera battery so I'm back recording on my computer so I know the quality is not probably not as good you know, all right, let's be real. It's not. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I'm back recording on my computer and I don't know the last when I was editing because I had done a few Facebook, uh, not Facebook, um, uh, YouTube lives for the last couple of episodes and I had trouble uploading them. They, you know, it went live fine, but then I had a lot of trouble getting it to stay on the channel. And now when you go on the channel, it says this channel has no content. So I don't know what that's about. But the whole point being, we're back to old school right now. I will remember to charge my batteries. <laughs> Boy, my batteries need to be charged. Anyway, <clears throat> so... Hopefully, I will be able to put graphics here. Otherwise, I will link in the down bar below all the places you can find me um, and how to spell everything and all of that good stuff. And while we're on the subject of the down bar below and clicking below, uh, if you like this video and you like the content, please give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of my videos on my channel, then please hit that subscribe button and remember to ring that notification bell, click on that notification bell, and you will be notified every time new content is put up on the channel. Okay, all that housekeeping's out of the way. All right, can we address the hair issue? <laughs> Where we left off last week? Yeah, I'm, I'm going through, I'm going through it. Yeah, a lot of stages here. Okay, so if y'all remember from last week, last episode, and I ain't taking that down, okay? I gotta remind myself what it looks like when I don't blow it dry. Um, I had made the decision after all, if you hadn't seen the last episode or whatever, the upshot of this whole situation is that from being quarantined and here in New York, everything was closed down for four months. I mean, my roots were in just disarray. So the day the salons opened, I went, you know, straight to my place I've been going to. And I was like, I don't want to deal with this anymore. Um, I really, if, the roots are going to come in. I just, just leave it alone already. Okay. So she took out the color that was in my hair and it, it's better this week. I mean, last week it was, it was some kind of hot yellow. Let me tell you that that was yellow y'all. It was <laughs> okay. We fixed that situation and I was actually letting it air dry naturally. And cause my hair is actually wavy slash to curly, but I couldn't control it. I just couldn't control it. And if you want a good laugh and you want to see what uncontrolled hair looks like with a lot of product in it to try to get it to do what you want, go watch last week's video because I'm like, that. that's it. Okay. All right. We got to dry it. So yeah, because of the damage, it's, it's like straw, but that's how we got from short red bob to where we're at now. Okay. That's my hair journey. In case anybody was interested. What else? Let's see. Okay, so I don't. If you follow me on Instagram, uh, I had put in my story. I had shown what some of what I'm growing outside. Um, you know, this whole when this whole pandemic started, um, I had actually already started um, growing seeds inside. I was looking at ways to grow outside, and you know, we had started with grow lights and seeds and all of this stuff. And so it really we started from square one, and my plants were growing and I put it on there and I had some tomatoes on there. I was really getting excited. And the other night a deer came and must have rung the dinner bell because every bit of any fruit or vegetable on those plants is gone. Half the plants are gone. <laughs> so yeah, that, that 
I wasn't happy. I was not happy. So, and because of the way we're situated, right? I mean, I'm looking out the back of my house and there is a huge county park back there, which we're separated from by like several hundred acres of woods is basically what's back there. It's just a lot of woods. So fencing is just not even a realistic option because there's like no way to defense me in. So now that I've gotten completely off the track, uh, I think that's it. I think that's it. I just literally finished um, a class I it from Vogue Knitting Live, the virtual Vogue Knitting Live for July. I just finished taking a class with Andre, I should know his name, but I don't, I don't remember. Anyway, it was in Portuguese color knitting. So it's a two part class. I took the first part today. Um, this is how my day is. I was late. <laughs> I was completely unprepared. I don't know what it is with me. This is the third time I'm doing this. And I, I look at the description and the homework and the materials. I keep forgetting to download the handouts. You would think by my sixth class, I would know to check the handouts. Didn't do it. Fortunately, he was using the handout in an overhead thing, so I didn't really need it. But the upshot was this whole, like, almost 45, well, I would say an hour and a half <clears throat> of this first class, because it's a two-part class, was going over color theory. Now, you all know, I have a mental block when it comes to color theory. I've taken classes, I've had the color wheel, and I've had people try to explain it to me. I get it, I get it, but it doesn't make any sense to me. I just don't see the colors. I don't know, I don't get it. So, <laughs> the, we have homework. We have homework. We have to take colored pencils. Oh, the colored pencils. The colored pencils. So we have to take colored pencils and a black and white picture of the yarn that we're going to use and figure out where to put. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I may just try to email someone and have fill it an email back to me. I don't know because there's, there's just no way. I, I will make the biggest idiot out of myself tomorrow. Not that I need help doing that, but it's like I don't need to show, you know, I'm kind of crazy. Uh, so what else is new? Not a whole heck of a lot. So why don't we just plunge into the knitting? First thing I got to show you is what we did in class. And uh, this is going to look like completely ridiculous. But here is my little sample. Obviously, it's not much, but this I knit in Portuguese style knitting. So we started by because the actually the easiest stitch to do in Portuguese knitting is purling. So if you hate to purl, you might want to look into Portuguese knitting and ribbing is super easy too. So if those two things, you dread them, you might want to look into Portuguese knitting because I think you're going to find that, you know, it's a game changer. So here down here was purling. Then we did the knit stitch. Now I have to say I have taken classes in Portuguese knitting before and two color Portuguese knitting. I remember how to do the Portuguese knitting, not so much the two color one. I think that one I only took like one class and probably was just unprepared like I normally am. I don't know where my head is at when I take these, but anyway. So we did a little bit of stockinette and then we went into ribbing up here. So that's what I did today. Okay, moving right along. Um, what do I have here? Okay. I am working on, and I don't remember if I showed it last, but I don't think it was finished when I recorded, my um, Lola's Choice kit from July, which was Laura Nelkin's uh, Farm Stand Sack. That's the name of the pattern, Farm Stand Sack. And I'm now going to pull it up because I'm going to show you what mine came out looking like because I did finish one. And of course, everyone was like, I want that one, I want that one, I want that one. I'm like, uh, no. <laughs> I have wanted a, a farm sack for so long that 
that one's mine. Okay, y'all, you know, I'll make you another one. So I did start one for my mother. Now this uses, these are really, really inexpensive if you want to make them. You can make so many because all it takes is one skein of, and I'll show you the skein of Barocco Pima 100. That's it. And you, there's a little flap I'll show you on the bag um, that's optional. So that requires one button. That's it. That's all you need. So the bag is started from a center, I think they call it a disappearing cast on. And when you weave this end in, let me see if I can show you on there. This end won't be there. It's almost, it looks almost exactly like the top of a hat. When you finish the top of the hat, that's how this looks like. Instead of being at the top and you're, you're finishing that way, you're starting that way. And I haven't gotten too far, but this actually is going to be the bottom of the bag. I'm knitting this on size eights, I think. I can barely see. I think it's size eights. And I'm using, right now I'm on my Lick and Needles, the short tip ones, so that I could get them off of double points, because you start this on double point needles. And then when it gets enough stitches, I, I prefer to work at that point on circulars, because you all just know the stitches are going to fall off. So these short tips are able to make a 16 inch, which is a, the smallest one. So yeah, so that's one of the things that I have been working on. I'm trying to think of, yeah, the other thing was the, the farm sack stand. And I, I don't know what happened to the bag that was in here with the button in it, but it's, it's vaporized. Let's see if I can find it. Just show you the button that went with it. No, yes, okay. Okay, the button that I got is from Melissa Jean, and I will link her website below. And this is the button that I picked out to go, and it's the same design as the one that was with the original, which I'll show you, but I picked this color to go with, with this market bag. So that's, that's that one. And <clears throat> the other thing I actually cast on last night, I know I showed in the last, um, whoops, that was so good. Uh, last week, I showed the yarn and the kit that came, that I had gotten to start this, but I forgot to show the pin. Okay, so what this is, is it is Romy Hill's Summer Shawl Knit Along. I think that's what it's called. But the name of the pattern is called Dry Creek. And the Knit Along started July 15th. And I actually started it last night late. And I was up late working on it because I kind of got addicted <laughs> to it. So let me just um, show you. Actually, I think I am going to pull it up because I don't want to... The yarn is bamboo, and if I start pulling from the middle to get the tags out of it, it's going to make a big mess. So let me... That was the other thing yesterday. Somehow or another, I locked myself out of Ravelry. How I managed to do that I don't know, but I did. But it's all good now. So let me let me see if I can pull this up real quick. Here we go. Okay, it's Romy's Summer Shawl Along. The name of the pattern is Dry Creek. I'm gonna give you a picture of what it looks like. Let's see, can you see that? Okay, that's what it hopefully will look like. Um, it is a half half shawl, um, so it's a traditional Shetland half half. So if you're familiar with a half shawl, half shawl is basically knit, and traditionally Shetland patterns are garter stitch patterns. They're not the background isn't stuck in it; it's garter stitch. And for a half shawl, you usually knit like a square. And, you know, from the bottom, actually, I think you knit it from the corner to corner, if I remember, because I did knit a half shawl a while back. Uh, and once you finish the center, 
you pick up a round for the border and then usually it's some sort of form of traditional lace border on it. Um, but this is triangular so you can see that there is a lace pattern in the center of the shawl and where you start is down here at this corner which if it was a full half you would knit to the other corner but since it's a half you're going to knit to the widest point and then bind off and then each row starts both right side and wrong side rows start with a yarn over so you have a very easy way to pick up stitches to put on then this knitted on border um, the yarn is dizzy lettuce oxenometer fingering. I, I'm sorry, I do have to pull this out because I don't remember it saying that. Oxenometer. Yep, that's it. Actually, this is, I'm sorry, she did put dizzy lettuce on here. That's not what we're using. I am using, this is by uh, Theodore's Pearls. Okay, it's by Theodore's Pearls. It's oxenometer I'm gonna put all this information below cuz you know and it is a hundred percent bamboo now I have knit with bamboo before I know some people don't like it they say it's slippery and it, it, I know there's been issues do you pull from the inside pull from the outside I'm no, I traditionally pull from the outside of the ball anyway because I find with any yarn if I'm pulling from the center of the ball I don't care what weight yarn it is, I don't care what fiber it is, at some point that ball is going to collapse in on itself and it is going to make a mess. Ask me how I know. <laughs> so I traditionally pull from the outside of the ball. I have never had a problem working with bamboo and this particular bamboo and I know my camera is not, you know, on this computer is not great and the quality is not great. So I don't know if it's going to show up, but hmm, let's see maybe on a lighter color. This bamboo, you can you can see it has almost yeah a haze to it. So it's not as slick as some other bamboo yarns that I have used, which are a little bit more slippery. Now I'm knitting this on signature metal needles, and I have not had any problem with the stitches slipping. Now, this is a reversible shawl, uh, but you do need to mark the right side, if for nothing else, for your own sanity, because in Romy's patterns, Romy only puts the right side on the pattern. The wrong side, in this case, is always knit exactly the same. Uh, so the chart is basically read every other row, and if you don't, know which side at that point is there, since it is a reversible shawl if you're not sure whether you're on the right side or the wrong side or if you made a mistake and you can't your count will be off you won't know where you are um, especially if your counts off like if you forgot a yarn over at the beginning of one of the rows so Romy suggested very wisely that you mark the right side of your shawl so that you know if you're looking at the pattern and you forgot to advance a row, if you forgot a yarn over and you're counting or your pattern is off and you're not sure why, this way you can count and be able to tell which row that you're on or if you're on a row and your count is wrong, you know you need to rip back. Anyway, you can see I did the garter section and I'm just up to where the patterning is starting. So this has been really enjoyable. I, I was actually up till about two o'clock last night. Probably why I got off to such a crazy start today. <laughs> but it's really an enjoyable knit. Um, it almost seems like it's easy when you look at it because it's not double-sided lace, which I find if I am not laser focused on that chart and laser focused on what I'm doing, I, I know, I know I'm going to make a mistake. But this isn't like a complicated lace pattern, but um, you have to, you have to pay attention. You can, you can watch TV once you get comfortable knitting with it, but it took a while to set up and really understand how I'm reading the pattern because Romy writes her patterns a differently, her charts. 
differently than um, I think almost every other designer. And when you when you get into it, you realize it's very logical and it's actually very easy to follow. It just takes kind of a while to get there. So I really, really recommend this pattern um, if you haven't joined it. Again, I will try to link it. I don't know if there are kits still available, but um, they were um, being sold through Longmont Yarn Shop. So if there are kits still available, I will link the kits below um, because my kit came with, they sent the kit in this really cute um, reusable bag, which I thought was really, really, really nice. So that came with it, and there it is, Longmont Yarn Shop. So that, that came with it, and then you have the option of ordering the kit with or without the pin. Now, if you um, have watched some of my previous videos from a while back, um, Romy was doing a pins and lace club for a long time, and I had joined... Um, one year I think I did yarn only and then I saw those pins people posting them and I was like no 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 so the following year I did it with the pins and then I'm not sure if I did it a third year or if she stopped the following year I'm not sure but anyway Romy also makes jewelry and uh, inspired I mean absolutely beautiful pieces so when I saw the style and what the pin looked like that came with the kit I was like yeah I I need that so these are handmade by Romy and again if you get the kit and I will I, I hate to keep saying it if they're not available I'm pretty sure they still have some you have the option of getting it with the pin or without the pin either way it's 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 really great it's it's nice yarn it's it's really pretty and the, they have a bunch of different colors these are the colors the ones that I picked and it's one is called chestnut I think I'm not sure um, this was the original. This is what Romy knit um, the sample in. And to me, it was the most neutral. And if you look, what's beautiful about the bamboo, and I didn't notice this until I started actually knitting with it, this is almost like a silvery gray color, but there are pops of pink in here. There are pops as, yeah, you can, let me see if I can get that to show. You can see right there. Um, there's pops of pink. It almost has at some angles like a, a purpley hue. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And the brown has all shades of brown in it, but it also has like some silver in it. The bamboo just takes the dye so uniquely is all I can say. And it has a beautiful sheen to it. So if you're interested in the pattern, I would highly suggest looking into the yarn. I can show you I actually swatched. Your girl swatched. I did. <laughs> so I only steam blocked it because I really wanted to start. You can see the, the variations in the yarn, in the color, in the shade. Um, I did get close to gauge. I think this snapped back a little bit, mostly because I did not soak it and pin it out, which I was fine with leaving the gauge as it is and staying on the needles that, that I got because I know I can pin it out to gauge. And if anything, it would be a little under, so I won't run out of yarn. But it really knit up so just airy and so feather light. And if you really fully block it, which Romy suggests that we do, it is almost like ethereal. That's the only word I can say is that it becomes this ethereal fabric. So I highly recommend that. That's, that's basically all that's been on my needles. That's been it. So yeah, so let me show you. Um, this bag I got, it is from 65 South. Okay, which is 65southalabama.com. That's the website, 65southalabama.com. I thought this was adorable. I got this at my local yarn shop. And the inside is really what sold me. I just, it lined with this newspaper print fabric, which 
I went crazy for. I mean, I love the outside fabric. <laughs> you know, I was kind of all over that, but I love the newsprint. I've had this a while, so it's, it's possible I might have shown this before. Let me show you my finished object. Here is, now I did not block this, but here is my market bag. It's called the Farm Stand Sack by Laura Nelkin. And I, I have wanted a market bag for like ever. I, why I, 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 it was hard to find a knit pattern for them. I've seen tons of crocheted ones, but it's very hard to find one that's knit. So when I saw this, when she came out with this one, I was all over it. So this is the finished. When I showed you where I was at before, you can see that's the bottom. So that's the way the bottom ends up looking almost exactly like the top of the hat. And it works on a pie formula until you get to the body of it, in which case then you're just working on this open lace part. You finish off with a little bit of garter at the top, and then you put stitches on holders, work half the strap, stitches on holders, work half the strap. Now, Laura suggests a three needle bind off, which is what I did. Um, it's a market bag. I wasn't getting fussy about it and from the outside it looks it looks fine um, Probably could trim my ends a little bit better. And I'm sure if I block it it would it would be better But the next on this one that I'm working on now I will probably graft the two edges together rather than doing the three needle stitch the three needle bind off It's not a big deal and this is the optional little tab You don't need to put it on if you don't want it just have the open bag. That's fine this is the button that came with my kit. Again, it's the same style button that I have for, for my mother's, just a different color. This one has a little more blue in it. That one has a little more gray in it. And I love this. And the reason I didn't block it, again, this is the Pima 100% cotton. And I think once I start using it and loading it up, it's going to grow on its own. And I'm afraid if I block it, it's going to be huge. Now, I guess I could put it in the dryer. I sh hindsight being 2020, I probably should have put the button on with a snap so that I could take it off and put it in the wash and dryer because it is just 100% cotton. But I didn't. So, yeah, so I'm going to have to hand wash it at some point. Um, and probably not be able to put it in the dryer. So we'll see, but I love it. I loved it so much that I ordered more yarn for it and more buttons. I showed you one. I ordered two other colors in the Pima Con, which I thought would be like really great for the summer, you know, summer bags. So I ordered one in the very creative colorway 8415, which is, I don't want to say a lime green. It's a muted lime green. How's that? Because my color sense stinks. Okay, we all know that. And then I got a corally color, which I thought was going to be really, really cute too. This is color 8426. They may on some websites, I'm pretty sure they do have names or, or some stores may name them or they may have names that they just don't put on the labels. I'm not sure, but those are the two colorways that I got in addition to that gray one that I'm working from my mother. And I ordered buttons for all of them from Melissa Jean. And let me just show you. She, by the way, is just so, so nice to deal with. She really is. So let me just show you the buttons that I got. And you can see which I ordered for which for the corally bag. And I don't know why my screen keeps going dark and for the green and then i have one other button which is this one which is totally neutral and it's not really showing up as it's got brown and sort of a very muted green in there really 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 pretty so yeah so that's i think pretty much all that i got as far as sketch goes Look at this, we're only half an hour in and I'm just rolling through. So yeah, so that's it for the knitting. That's it, that's all she wrote. So the other thing that was on the agenda that I wanted to talk about, uh, I am really thinking of 
doing kind of like maybe separating things out a little bit more. I mean, right now I didn't have that much knitting, so I'm going to put this all up in one episode, but I really wanted to do a fragrance Friday and talk about, you know, all things fragrance, perfumes, fragrance, home scents, things like that, where we all started from with the knit scents. So today being Friday, it is actually, I didn't say that, it's Friday, uh, July 17th. Um, I wanted to talk about, and I know I had mentioned this before, I have returned to Scentsy. Uh, I was missing it. I love my warmers. You can see I have my little teapot one back there. Um, and being stuck in the house and you know, we're all, I've been, we've been cleaning out and redoing and whatnot. So it, it's just so nice, been so nice to go back to that and re, you know, visit and scenting and the house and make it, just making it sort of more pleasant to be stuck in the house. <laughs> so I did rejoin and Again, I don't know. I, I know it's going on for the month of July. I don't know if it's going to continue through August. So if you have any questions about it, reach out to me. But they had um, an opportunity for returning consultants. Uh, if you came back, they had a recertification kit that you, you could purchase to get sort of, you know, I guess they assume that you already have. Because, I mean, I was a customer long before I ever became a consultant and I'm still a customer. Okay. <laughs> I, I love fragrance. We all, we all know that. I mean, perfume, um, fragranced anything, home fragrance. So, I mean, it's something that I love. So I'm also a customer. I buy it. I use it. I really enjoy it. But again, um, I did have the opportunity to get the recertification kit and I thought about it because, you know, it's not something you really need. But it ended up where, I mean, the fragrances from when I left had changed. There were a lot of new ones. And because it's July and August being a transition month, the new catalog is coming out August 1st, um, they send you a transition kit. And I figured, all right, that, that'll do. Because that way I will have all of the summer fragrances and all of the new fall winter fragrance testers. So I'm going to just show you some of what came in the kit. It really, it's it's smaller than when you first joined your your membership kit, because again, I I'm assuming they assume you already have that from the first time around. So it was a little bit different stuff. So let me just show you what I'm talking about here when I'm jamming my jaws over. Okay, these are the testers. So this gives the opportunity if you have, I mean clearly nobody's doing parties and things like that right now in person, but you can take these testers, people, you know, friends, family, whatever. Um, it, it, it gives you a sample of each of the scents. So there's a little tester in here um, that you basically can just decide which scents you like. Give you, if your customers are asking or if somebody asks me, you know, what's a citrusy or a bakery scent, I can, you know, I have access to all of them. This one happens to be a brand new one. Sneak peek. This one is called Almond Croissant. Okay, so people can do also, I don't want to go rambling in a different direction, but a lot of what we, you people can do if they want to share this with, or if they just want to sample it themselves, is what's called a pouch party. So basically I would send them a bunch of, of these little testers, um, some order sheets, things like that. But I'll, I'll go into that another time. But that was included in my kit was the testers. They also sent me one full size bar. And this is a new scent, not new, 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 but new to me because they did not have it back it, back when I was oh and from what I gather this is like a super popular fragrance this is blackberry raspberry black raspberry god I cannot even read black raspberry vanilla okay so I'm really excited to try that one so that came um I got both the summer spring summer catalog which is this one 
and the full winter catalog, which I will be giving. This will come out um, August 1st. So that's what, two weeks? Maybe last, it's around two weeks from now. So I will be giving sneak peeks of what's in here. <laughs> and you can see what's right on the cover is the, actually, what is this? This is, I can't, I can't read this. Dancing Sugar Plums. That's the, the fragrance. That's one of the full winter fragrances. Um, so we, that came, we got some of those. I got, um, what is this? A scent circle. You can hang these. These are really effective, quick ways. You want to hang it from your rear view mirror in the car, hang it in your closet. I would say stuff this in a drawer, put it in a drawer, keeps your clothes smelling fresh and everything, you know, so that's nice. This is a new product. I have never tried this. Um, this is the Scentsy Hand Cream. They have, we have a bunch of fragranced body products, laundry products, pet products, all which ways to keep your whole house just smelling amazing. So this one is in the sea salt and avocado. Okay, so that's what the hand cream looks like. And the other thing I got, which I didn't even unbox, I was just going to take it out on the camera and show you all while I saw it, was the um, a classic warmer. So if you're not familiar with um, Sensi, with the brand, with the products, it is a uh, system of flameless wax, meaning, and that's ex that is how I found Sensi. I was a die hard candle burner, okay? I was all over the candles, all over the house. Um, now I have cats, I have dogs. Um, was it bright? No. Uh, but what did it was um, someone in the neighborhood accidentally uh, left, a or left a candle on, I don't even think it was like during the day, um, had a candle on and it turned into a tragedy. I don't even wanna, it, it just, it scared me enough that I never, never from that day on lit another scented candle in my house. Okay. I was done. I was done. I was never going to do that. And I never did. So I was looking for, I really missed it. I missed my, um, fragrant candles. I missed my scented candles. I loved having the, the scent and I really missed it. And that's how I found Scentsy in the first place. So like I said, I've been a customer a lot longer than a consultant. Uh, and I didn't know what it was. So basically what it is, is it is a system where you use a low wattage um, bulb. Um, some of our warmers don't even need a bulb. And a ceramic tray. This one is just a plain, this is actually a very basic, it's called the Classic, uh, black, classic Satin Black warmer and this is it okay so it's just basically a tapered warmer inside you put and it comes with the light bulb okay which you put inside and oh let me just put that back in there the light bulb warms the wax in that you put in the dish you take one of these wax bars now you don't use the whole bar. Um, usually for a regular size warmer, I would say use two cubes. And you can use them depending on how many hours you have them on during the day. Um, I have a lot of warmers through my house, so you know they're on for like one is on for two hours or whatnot. And I find I get at least a week out of the two cubes from my warmers. Um, you put this on, you put this on top of the the light bulb. This, you know, this sits on there. And it warms the wax, the wax melts, and the fragrances are phenomenal. The quality of the wax from this, because I have tried the tarts, the melts, all of those things, and I just didn't like it. It, it just smelled waxy. It just didn't smell the same as like even a candle, which I, you know, thinking back, I couldn't have been too good because the whole inside of the candle would get black and you'd have to stand there and try to clean it out. You don't have any of that with this. A couple of things. The wax from uh, Scentsy is 
designed and it's made to melt at an extremely, at the lowest possible temperature. So there is no danger of anybody getting burned. You can stick your finger in the wax. You can, if a, if a child put, touch the wax, touch the warmer, it is not going to burn anybody. If a pet accidentally knocks it over, it may break, um, but it isn't going to burn anything. It isn't going to start a fire. It's not going, you're not going to have the same issues you would have with an open flame candle. Um, the other thing is that the fragrance in the bars is truly true to the fragrance. That's all I can say. Now, are there some I like and some that I really don't like? Absolutely. But there are so many, <laughs> there are so many that there is something pretty much for everybody. So that's just a little bit of the backstory. That's if you weren't familiar, weren't with me from the very beginning um, and didn't know what Scentsy was, that's a little short rundown of it. Uh, we will be, uh, I'll be talking more about it or I'd like to keep it to Fragrance Fridays and maybe share what I'm enjoying um, also with my regular fragrances because we all know that I got to be spraying on me something. Uh, so, so yeah, so hopefully we will be able to share that on Fragrance Fridays. So please put all your comments, please, you know, let me know what you're thinking. What do you want to see? What do you like? Um, what do you not like? What changes? What, what, what can I do for you? Okay, put that in the comments sections below. Don't forget, we have a Facebook group called Knit Sense, uh, Knit Sense Group, something like that. It just put in the search bar on Facebook, Knit Sense, it'll pop up. And you can follow me on Instagram as well. So that's all I have. And I'm under 45 minutes. I think that's got to be like a record for me. That's that's got to be a record. I hope I wasn't rambling because, like I said, I'm kind of tired today. But anyway, um, I hope everyone is staying well. I hope you are all staying safe. Please wear a mask when you go outside. Um, yeah, it's for you and it's for everybody else. I'm off my soapbox. That's it. That's just the nurse in me. Got to come out once in a while. Uh, so I hope to see you again. Hopefully, I, I don't know, maybe won't even wait a week. Let's see. We'll see what I have to show you. Uh, otherwise, hopefully, I will see you next Fragrance Friday. And in the meantime, remember to knit with sense.